1045 the team, 1045theteam.com. Levac joined by Matt Verderam. He is the NFL director for Fansided. Uh, you can follow him on Twitter at Matt Verderam. You, know, you got a heavy focus on Kansas City. This, this team starts this year 1 and 5. They've won 11 straight since then. What the heck happened? How did they get so good? I, I think the talent was always there. I mean, a lot of people before the season predicted that they would make a deep playoff run. Uh, you know, but it, it went sideways for them after they lost week two to Denver. They had five turnovers and then nationally televised Thursday night game. And they just went into a funk. And I think they got a little bit of a break when they, they were one and five. They played Pittsburgh and Landry Jones was a quarterback and the Chiefs were able to knock him around a little bit and got a little bit of confidence. And from there, I think it was more just they got some confidence. They learned how to play without some old Charles who had gotten hurt in week five. And, and from there, you know, the defense really led the way. They've been a lights out ever since. And Matt, next to Jamal Charles' injury last weekend, Jeremy Macklin goes down. Every fan holds their breath. What's the latest on Jeremy Macklin right now? It's up in the air. Uh, you know, a lot of the reporters around the scene have said that he's been walking around. He doesn't have a brace. There's no swelling on that ankle. You know, he's been going up and down some stairs. So that seems to be, uh, you know, positive for the Chiefs. He hasn't practiced this week. It's not expected that he'll practice today, which will be their last practice before they head to Foxborough. So, it, it, it probably will be he'll be questionable, and then they'll go from there. My guess is he's going to play, and then it's just a question of how effective is he. Can he can he make his cuts? Can he run full speed? Remains to be seen. Justin Houston, another big part of that defense, in and out with injuries. That knee, he had a brace on last week, but played. Is he going to be good to go? Yeah, he should be able to play practice yesterday. He played in the, the wild card game. and he was good against the run if you watched the film, and then he pointed out that he felt he was better against the run than he was against the, the pass. He really couldn't get much of a of a rush going. He wore a knee brace for the first time in his life, and he said the knee brace left him with some bruises on his knee. He wasn't comfortable with it. It didn't fit right. They, they think they've remedied that, and he'll probably be wearing that brace again on Saturday, but hopefully this time it'll be a little bit better fitting. 104.5 The Team joined by Matt Verderam, at Matt Verderam on Twitter. And among his, his many jobs, uh, he is also the editor-in-chief of Arrowhead Attic. Uh, Alex Smith, many people look at him as just a game manager. Now that Jeremy Macklin has been there, uh, he looks more and more like a Pro Bowl-style quarterback. Is is the injury to Macklin going to take us back to calling him a game manager? I don't know. I don't think so because you know even if Macklin can't play or if he does play, he's very limited. Now, they have Travis Kelsey, who you can make an argument next to Gronkowski. He's probably the most dynamic tight end in the league. He's big and he's fast. Had a huge game against Houston. Um, you know, and then the Chiefs have some lesser-known receivers who aren't exactly prolific players, but they're very fast. And that would be one in Albert Wilson and another in rookie Chris Connolly, who will be taking the spot of Macklin if he can't go. Wilson has come on as the years gone. He's a second-year player. He's undrafted out of Georgia State. And he's a guy who gives them a lot of speed. In fact, they should have had a touchdown with him on the on the second drive in uh, Houston, but Smith overthrew him. So I think the Chiefs will still take their shots. The Pats don't have a great group in the secondary. They do have a solid group. But I think the Chiefs will try to stretch the field. I think they know they have to. When you look at the last time these teams matched up, it was last year in Monday Night Football, Chiefs uh, 41-14, and it was the game that everybody wanted to bury the Patriots dynasty at that point. Do, do the Pats... Do that again. Can they do? Do they do they get beat down? Do the do the Chiefs just have their number? What do you see when you look at a matchup like that a year later? I think that game has a little relevance in the standpoint that a lot of the players in that game are still here. Uh, of course, the rosters have changed somewhat. You know, Chiefs don't have Jamal Charles in this game, but they do have Eric Berry and Derek Johnson, who who were in that game. Of course, Macklin plays in as well. Uh, I don't think the Chiefs will, will beat down the Patriots. I would be stunned that you know New England is. Just you know, a very, very good team. They haven't played well the last six weeks, but they're getting much healthier. And they expect Edelman to play. Gronk is going to miss practice today with a knee injury, but he's expected to play. So, you know, I don't think that'll happen. I think it'll be a very good game. As far as having a number, I think the one thing the Chiefs present to New England that will be very interesting to watch in this game, the Chiefs can rush the quarterback as well as any team in the NFL, and they do it without blitzing. The Chiefs will very rarely blitz. So it'll be if New England can block the Chiefs, New England probably wins the game. If they can't block, the Chiefs have players in the secondary who can take advantage of any mistake Brady makes, and it could be a very long day in Foxborough. And Matt, right at this point in time, you know, everybody thinks New England is this big beast, but it seems like Kansas City 
is the team out there, the hottest team. They're the team to beat. They are the strongest right now. Who do you think wins this game come this weekend? Uh, I think it'll be a really tight game. I think the injuries on both sides have a lot to play into it. I, you know, I think maybe whoever's healthy, not so much by the beginning, but by the end of the game, is going to win. But I'm a firm believer of you win in the trenches. And so I'm taking Kansas City. I think it's going to be a really tight game. But I just think the Chiefs, the offensive line was a sieve early in the year. It's been excellent down the stretch. I think defensively, the Chiefs are going to pose some problems for New England. You know, everybody talks about the pass rush as I did earlier, but they can they can cover. They have Marcus Peters, they have Sean Smith, they have Eric Berry. They have they have a lot of players in that back end. And one guy to watch in this game is Hussein Abdullah. When they played last year on Monday night, he guarded Edelman for a lot of that game, and Edelman had four catches for twenty three yards. So. It's something to keep an eye on, but I think ultimately the Chiefs pass rush is going to be a difference in this game. NFL Director for Fan Sided, Matt Verderam. Now, we are your home for New York sports here at 104.5 The Team. You've got one of our kids out there, our tight end from Albany, Brian Parker. Any updates on him? He's been good. You know, he's, he's their third tight end. He's come in. He's, he's done a nice job. The, the Chiefs lost James O'Shaughnessy, who was a fifth-round draft pick this year, to a season ending and the injury. And Parker's come in. He's played some snaps as their third tight end. He's a he's a really good blocker. You know, he hasn't been very much in the passing game, but that's to be expected for a young kid. And, but he's really come in. The Chiefs love to run those three tight end sets, and Parker's really made made good impressions for himself by by feeling the edge on a lot of these runs that they like to get outside the hash marks. All right, man, we really appreciate it, Matt Verderam. Follow him on Twitter at Matt Verderam. Matt, thank you so much for your time today. No problem, man. Thanks.